In this Adobe Captivate movie, we will look at an application of the Class Action Project's Heliacal Rising Simulator. This simulation is designed for providing feedback for a peer instruction question over this topic. It is available for use or easy download to your own computer on the web at astro.unl.edu. Heliacal rising refers to the reappearance of a star that has been absent from the night sky for a period of time. We normally divide up stars into three declination ranges. Circumpolar stars that are always up in the sky, never rise stars are never above the horizon, and rise and set stars. A star that has a heliacal rising must be a rise and set star. The three declination ranges depend upon the latitude of the observer, with rise and set stars being found between plus and minus 90 minus the latitude. Heliacal risings were important in many ancient cultures, including the Babylonians and the Greeks, for determining dates of planting and harvesting. They were especially important to the ancient Egyptians, who could tell time based upon the heliacal risings of many different stars, and based their entire calendar upon that of Sirius, the brightest star in the sky. The upper left of the heliacal rising simulator contains a horizon diagram where you can see the north celestial pole, south celestial pole, and the celestial equator in blue, the ecliptic in white, and the observer's meridian and the sun's declination circle on the simulated date in yellow. The panels provided for controlling the date, observer's latitude, and the coordinates of the star in question are straightforward to use. The bottom panel of the simulator displays a timeline where daytime hours are colored yellow and night hours a dark gray. A blue bar indicates the range of times for which the star in question is above the horizon, and thus a star is visible in the night sky during the times when the blue bar and gray night times overlap. Note that the blue bar is only available if the star coordinates specified make it a rise and set star for the latitude specified. The red cursor allows the user to change the time of day, and there are various options for locking the time of day to a certain value, like sunset. Let's use the simulator to explore the heliacal rising of Sirius from Egypt. Note that the star coordinates by default are already set to Sirius, and we will change our latitude for Cairo, Egypt. So we are now seeing the sky around March 20th, near noon, since we see the sun, on the observer's meridian from Cairo. Note that the star Sirius is still below the eastern horizon, so it has not yet risen at noon. I'm going to grab the time cursor here and start slowly advancing time. We see the sun getting closer to the western horizon. And right around 1.30 in the afternoon, we see Sirius poking its head up here over the eastern horizon. If I continue to advance time, the sun gets lower in the sky and Sirius gets higher until we see a little after 6 p.m. that the sun sets and Sirius is still well above the horizon near the observer's meridian. So an observer in Cairo on March 10th can clearly see Sirius up in the evening sky. I'm now going to lock the time here so that we're always simulating the end of twilight and we see the sun is just a little bit below the western horizon. So if I continue to move forward during the year, Note that Sirius gets closer to the western horizon at the time of the ending of twilight. This is occurring because stars rise and set four minutes earlier per day due to the Earth's revolution about the sun. Right around May 31st, we see that the star Sirius is setting right at the same time that twilight is ending. So we've reached the limit for which Sirius will be visible in the nighttime sky. If I continue moving forward in time past May 31st, we now see that Sirius clearly sets before twilight ends, and during this period an observer will not be able to see Sirius in the sky. Now Sirius will continue to rise and set four minutes earlier per day, so a question now is, could Sirius be seen in the morning skies even though it can't be seen in the evening sky? So let me unlock time, and let's advance time so we move the sun over to the eastern horizon. And note here around 4 a.m. when the sun rises that Sirius is still quite a bit below the eastern horizon. So Sirius is not visible in the sky now in that it sets before the sun sets in the western horizon, and it rises after the sun rises in the east. 
So let me lock time now to the start of twilight. And let's again move the date forward and we see that Sirius is getting closer to the eastern horizon at the time of twilight starting. And right around July 30th here, we see that Sirius rises before the start of twilight. So the sun is quite a bit below the eastern horizon and Sirius would be visible here uh, assuming there aren't any trees or other obstacles in your path because the glow from the sun has not yet hit the eastern horizon. So the heliacal rising is starting around July 30th from Cairo and Sirius has reappeared after being gone from the night sky for about two months. Please visit the Nebraska Astronomy Education site on the web for this and other high-quality astronomical simulations.